Hi everybody, I'm Cap Bailey. Hey, this is Bob Mackey. And we're currently playing through Bayonetta 2. This is part two of our long play where we're going through the entire game. And we're going to also, we're going to have all the videos and everything. Yeah. I mean, Bob, the, Bob's uh, driving. I'm hanging out on the computer. The first one should be on, yeah, it's on YouTube. I watched it. Uh, so if you want to catch up, go to YouTube. Don't do that now, though. You no, watch stay us here. live and uh, tell your friends and uh, tell everyone you know. But uh, last time we played through the prologue, um, sorry, the end instead of the beginning. The prologue and chapter one. Now we're going to head for chapter two. And nothing gets me more excited about Bayonetta than taking a big hot stinky bus ride over here <laughs> full of the world's oldest people bob um, coming all over from the east bay which yeah. is kind of the equivalent of bayonetta's journey to heaven pretty much except there you are know going more... from hell over to the heaven of san francisco oh my god that's not fair <laughs> but instead of fighting demons i'm dealing with old yoda-esque people who are very belligerent about bus bus travel and who can blame them if i was a thousand years old i'd be cranky too and hello, Seven Pains, Garlot, and Video Red Stripe. Thanks for joining us today. Yeah, and please uh, comment. I, I can't look in the chat window or I'll die, but uh, Kat will be handling all that stuff. So uh, Because I'm cool. Yeah. It's what I do. Or maybe you're not as good at Bayonetta as me. Although I'm not going to speak to, uh, I don't know. I wanted to play this before I came over here, but I was too busy. So it's possible I could be crappy. But always remember that uh, when I'm playing and talking, it is much different than just playing and not having to, to be entertaining at the same time. It's a, it's a, it's a skill that I, I kind of have, but I'm working on it. So it's, we've got a clumsy cowboy or something to that effect? Yeah, he was in, he was in the first game. I forget his name um, because I don't really pay attention to the story too much. But like, Bob. As, <laughs> sorry. But as with any male character in Bayonetta, uh, he is just the target of... Um, the target of mockery. It's pure misandry. <laughs> Start writing your letters right now. <laughs> Bayonetta hates men. But I think it's, it's a funny dynamic because, you know, usually it is the women who are being rescued in games and stuff like that. Now it's like, now, now it's Bayonetta's turn to be the hero. And he's French. Uh, no, he just smelled her perfume. Oh, I see. Um, yeah, he's kind of a lech in his own way. Uh, he just is sort of the com. I mean, there's there's a little bits of comic relief throughout, uh, and this character is one of them. He was in the first game too, and he's so memorable that I th that I forget his name entirely. Luca? Uh, that's probably it. Yes, that is it. <laughs> he's not a pet, apparently. No, and he has dorkier glasses than Bayonetta. No kidding. His glasses used to be dorkier. It feels like it is like a subversion of the uh, the Platinum Games character and that he tries to look cool all the time but always fails. Mm. Where most Platinum Game characters are, uh, they try to look cool and are the coolest things ever. So we're learning a bit more about their dynamic. Do we have anything coming in with the chat? I, I wonder what people think of Bayonetta 2 so far, if they caught the first, uh, the first chapter that we played through. Yeah, um, if you have any thoughts or comments on the first uh our first part of bayonetta 2 or what you're if you're playing along with us um it definitely put some comments in the chat or heck send us emails yeah. um our twitter is us gamer net and i'm at the un underscore catbot and bob is at, I'm bob, at bob, servo. Yeah, bob servo but i can't look at my twitter now but you can send me things later like you suck at combos bro yeah bro or you call that witch time we're still getting people trickling into the chat room, so... Okay. Yeah, it usually takes a good, like, ten minutes for everyone to show up. Exactly. Um, but we're probably going to play three more stages, depending on how long that takes. Um, it's, it's probably doable. I kind of forget... I mean, I play through this game, like, three or four times, but I kind of forget what's next. A lot of stages are just like, oh, here's a boss fight, which is cool. Do we want to recap the the previous level uh, oh, for people who didn't join us? The Bayonetta is... There was something uh, about like a, a fighter jet yeah. and fighting on the fighter jet, which was pretty sweet. Yeah, basically, you might want to look up a synopsis because I sure as hell can't tell you, but uh, Bayonetta is is guiding this, this small child um, who also has witch powers uh, towards this uh, destination. That's really all you need to know. Uh, I mean, really, you're just watching to see the cool acrobatics, the neat enemies, the fun cutscenes that don't make a lot of sense to me. 
Uh, there is so much like mythology and lore that is buried in this game. Thankfully, it's it's all optional. You can read into it if you want. You don't have to. But there's a lot of world building in this world that um, like it's there if you like that kind of thing. If it, it, you can totally ignore it if you don't. You know, we're both playing Evolve right now. Yeah. And it strikes me that that game also is another game that has a ton of mythology and lore built into it. Where do, that, they, where do they hide it? Uh, usually in the dialogue, the conversation. Okay, so it like, is like Left 4 Dead in that way. Yeah. It's like they'll just have conversations and you'll learn a bit more like about what's happening. Exactly. Um, for example, there's one offhand reference to the medic whose name is Val. Yeah. Um, going on about being a part of the mutagen wars. Oh god. That sounds like it is. Was that was that like an X-Men uh, No, it's story? Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. No. Oh, the mutant. Oh, Apparently yeah, um all I could gather from it was that it was it involved people splicing their DNA with bugs. I see. So th that's a thing. Yeah. So that so there is actually a lot of lore. It makes me sad that that game didn't have a story mode. Yeah, it's true. I, I think they might have fallen back on what they did with Left 4 Dead hmm. and decided to make that not a priority, but I can see how that... I mean, the setting is a lot more outlandish than Left 4 Dead, even though a zombie uprising is outlandish uh, in its own way. But less so because I mean, it's not really telling a story, you're just hunting a monster. Yeah, yeah. For the most part. Like, I, I mean, I, I played it, and this is not an Evolve uh, stream, by the way, but... Uh, I, Surprise! I, yeah, it's like, no, we're just gonna, we're gonna play Bandit and talk about Evolve. It's, it's gonna totally blow your mind. It's a new form of media called Confuse, Confusovision. In which the things you see are different than the things you hear. Video Red Stripe says that he caught our first playthrough a few hours ago, and that he's happy he's going to catch the second part oh, so thank quickly. Thank you so much. Um, he says that he's considering a Wii U, and this game might swing it for him. You, I, it's hard to say if this is worth it. I mean, it was my number three game of last year of all of all 2014. Um, I don't want to tell people to buy a system for one game, though. That's, that's kind of a hard proposition to make. But um, if you buy a Wii U now, and I think I said this last time, um, you there is no shortage of good games. I mean, they've, they've had like over two years to build a pretty good library. A lot of us are, uh, who've had a Wii U for a while are just kind of waiting for the next good game. But if you're just getting one, there are so many waiting for you. And I just beat another one of the little challenge stages. Muspelheims. Is What's that? that? Muspelheims, right? Muspelheims? Is that what they're called? Uh, I think they're called Muspelheims. I have to look at it again. I don't even know what that's supposed to be, but... There's a lot of, like, biblical arcana and lots... I mean, because you're playing as angels and you're, things like Or you're that. fighting angels. Like Nephilim and all, all, the, all like, the... Um, I mean, I went to Catholic school, I didn't learn this stuff, but, uh, like, all the different kinds of angels, like, the different... Because there are different ranks of angels, it's weird. I, I don't... I don't study that kind of stuff, but it's cool how, how uh, rich the mythology is. I don't believe in angels. I was never touched by one, so... <laughs> you were not touched by an angel? Yeah. Okay. Um, its mythology reminds me a lot of a last generation RPG that had two parts that came out from THQ... Where you're playing, it's kind of like... Really? Was it a Japanese RPG? No, no, it's a Western RPG. Was it Two Worlds? <laughs> no. Um, I can't think of an RPG that uh, THQ put out, actually. THQ RPG, God of War... And Rapture. Uh, Darksiders. Oh, okay, I guess that is an RPG, you're right. Yeah, no, it totally is. Except, it's, uh, uh, it's a combo of Zelda. It, it's right on the... It's right on the cusp. It feels like someone opened a, a crate of, like, McFarlane action figures it's and just started smashing them into each other. <laughs> I think that's a little unfair. That game is actually pretty good. It's okay. Good. I like the first one more than the second one. I, Did I think... you play them both? No, I didn't. Um, I mean, I played a little of the second one, sorry. I meant I finished the first one. I didn't see that. I don't think it's ever going to get finished, sadly. Uh, yeah, I don't know if... I don't know if the market is there for, like, a Zelda clone. Isn't that weird to think about? Well, I think the problem is that Nintendo is so good at what they do. Yeah. There are very few uh, good Zelda clones. Like, Okami's one of them. Even that has its problems. Uh, yeah, it was weird. I think that was, like, the last viable Zelda clone. Platinum, guys. What do you think? It's just, like... It's weird that Pokemon is, like, a, just a profit engine. It just makes so much money. Yeah. <clears throat> and yet... Oh, we're no, we don't have pro uh, Pokemon clones anymore, do we? Not really. We still have Monster Hunter clones. I just saw one the other day. 
Oh yeah, but people just they can't seem to rel- replicate the 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 art the the combination of art gameplay and pure marketing muscle that Game yeah. Freak brings to the table. I have to say I like Monster Hunter, but they could learn something about marketing from Pokemon because all the Monster Hunter's monsters name monster names are just the worst things that you'll never remember. Like I play Monster Hunter for two hundred hours, and I can tell you maybe three monster names because they're all just like like gibberish. If they had cool like marketable names like Pokemon, I think the game might actually do a little better. If that sounds weird. Matt Mitchell says Kirby and the Rainbow Curse is out in seven days. That's yeah. a, that's a Wii U game. I'm reviewing it. Oh yeah, you are. It's weird to play a console game that doesn't that you won't be looking at the TV while you're playing it. <laughs> yeah, it's true. That's so strange. It's just like I want to look at the TV, but uh, that's what the second player is for. Our little buddy's back. Yep, that's uh, DJ uh, something or other. <laughs> he looks like like a bad DJ. He specializes in dubstep. Yep. Okay, so how great are these graphics? These are pretty great. Yeah, like. This is what totally wowed me, like, people need to stop picking on Wii U because no one is doing this level of, like, artistry with the superpower tools they have. It's probably really simple technical tricks that you could do on a PS3, but still, it looks so good. I love it. I mean, we were commenting on this last week that these days, as long as you have a really distinctive art style and you run at a good frame rate and... And you you output at 1080p. I mean, you can get away with a lot. Right? Yeah. The yeah. golf the golf the golf between the PS4 and the Wii U is certainly not as great as the golf between the Xbox 360 and right. the, and the Wii. And I think I said it last time. Like even making a game of this level of quality, and that's not saying it's, it's a lower level of quality, but like even making a really good looking last gen game is too much for most most developers to do, except for the huge ones. So like. It's really great to see people um, making the most out of art rather than, you know, pushing technology where it, when it's way too expensive to do. Well, that's just where we are in terms of game development these days. Yeah, it's like technology has outpaced our ability to, like, make games with it. Oh, huh. Stamps. Yeah, I forgot stamps were in this game. I played through it three times, man. Wow, that's impressive, Bob. Yeah. It's impressive because my brain is broken. Um... See, all the lore is just like optional. Uh, you can read those later if you want. I never do. Like the codex in Mass Effect or something? Yeah. The codex that I never read? Bayonetta is an angel. Or she's a witch. If you're just joining us, Bob is currently in the middle of chapter two of Bayonetta 2. I must apologize again for all the button mashing you're going to hear. This is, a, this is a very button mashing game. In a good way. Yeah, no, totally. Um. Seven Pains suggests that Dark Souls is the best Zelda clone. Ooh. You know what? You can make that argument. I would. Um, but like most really good clones, it totally has its own take on the genre. Yeah, it definitely... And it's much more of an RPG. It definitely has, like, old Zelda DNA in it with the way you discover things. Like, talk about Zelda 1 DNA, you know. Right now I'm riding this guy. It's pretty fun. Very so nice. I'm doing pretty well. I'm, I'm channeling my bus anger into Bayonetta playing. <laughs> <laughs> how dare that 105 year old woman bump into me? Is that how old she was? She looked about. She like once a human being reaches a certain age, they enter like the Yoda stage of their life, where they're just like this this tiny ball of like wrinkled skin <laughs> that bounces around. We do have an inordinate number of hunchbacks around this neighborhood. Yeah. I'm not trying to be ageist or anything, but uh, Jeez, Bob, the human body so is a terrible thing and we should all be afraid about what's going to happen to us in the future. Especially us, who are yeah. all hunch- hunched over our video yeah. games all the time. Like, being a gamer has killed my posture, kill- killed my muscle mass, killed everything. <laughs> uh, I'm just going to be a head in a jar uh, after I'm 40 because my body will have withered away. <laughs> well, as long as you got your hands still, or yeah. your mind. It's like, video games have ruined my life. I'm only 32 years old. Okay, Hans Mole Man. Yeah, I was going for a Simpsons reference. Good job. Yep. Don't be like us kids. So, I feel like I'm playing better than I did last time, which is good. Well, didn't you say that you went through and, like, practiced a little bit before uh, coming over? No, I wanted to, but I didn't have time. Ah, uh, that sucks. Um, the busy life of a game journalist, I everybody. I so many video games. 
So things are heating up a little bit in this game. Um, if you're good at Witch Time, though, it really helps with uh, managing. Ooh, ooh! I forgot how bad those are. Oh man, I forgot you could do this. Wow. Okay, sorry. I'm just amazing myself with these like little stage traps that I forgot existed. So, could you like clarify what exactly you just did? Uh, I grabbed into the chandelier and I used it as a weapon to attack these these characters here. And I didn't know I could do that actually. So you really do discover new stuff every time you play this game. It's very very um, intricate and mechanical, and you're not going to figure out everything in one playthrough or even three. So. I. I think that the best action games, and this is the case with Dark Souls as well, as long as we were talking about Dark Souls, allow you to kill enemies in creative ways, and one of them is using the environment to the maximum extent possible. Oh yeah, yeah, um, for sure. Dark Souls is all about the environment and using it to your advantage. Luring, luring enemies in, um, knocking them off cliffs, things like that. But man, I love Platinum games so much. Seven Pains mentions that StarCraft and League of Legends pros have the health of a 60-year-old. God, I know. I have another um, Simpsons quote ready for you guys if, you're, if you need it. Do it. It's like, my doctor says I should stop, but he says I got the wrist of an 80-year-old. <laughs> that's when that's when Jimbo was playing Razor it, Fight 2, the slashing. I thought that was going to be a Bone Storm thing. Oh no, that 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 uh, is from the episode The PTA Disband, so look that one up. It's a good one. Probably 20 years old at this point. I think so. It would have to be. We're reaching the point where all the Good Simpsons episodes are now 20 years old. Just about, yeah, right? So here we go. I've got a nice weapon to use here. It's really devastating, as you can see. It doesn't last very long though. Oh man, yeah, his weapon is bad too. Oh man, I forgot about this. There we go. So I've already kind of damned myself to a low a low score in this stage because I've used two uh, items. Scrub. I know. But I suppose that in a game like Bayonetta 2, um, it has the good kind of challenge where it can be kind of as hard as you want it to be. Yeah, you can be a perfectionist. You don't need to get the good trophies, and I know I'm not going to get one now. God, what is his problem? There. So there we go. He doesn't like you, Bob. Well, I'm just trying to kill him. Silver medal. That's trash. All right, here we go with more enemies. Anything coming in on Twitter? I mean, not Twitter, uh, the chat. Video Red Stripe says, I'm playing Dark Souls at the moment. You guys talking about it suddenly was uncanny. <laughs> That's, wow, at the same time you're watching this? Um, I don't know about, like... Man. I don't know, like, right now. Oh no, he is. He's probably oh, okay. playing it right now, I think. Sorry, there's like, is there talking coming from the other room? Yes. Oh. It's somebody in the garden. Oh, tell me shit. Sorry. Play Banana uh, 2, goddammit. I'm gonna blame uh, them for my mistakes. Thank you. <laughs> this is this is true city living. Exactly, right? You can't shut yourself up in a suburban castle. <laughs> you have to actually encounter other people, it's terrifying. Yeah, I would prefer to be able to shut myself up in a suburban castle. Actually, no, I wouldn't. Gosh, these monsters. I know. Now I can do it. There we go. Almost got it. It's interesting that games like these... I do feel like there is a pretty strong shift away from these kinds of games and more toward Dark Souls. Uh, what do you mean? Uh, like, by dark, more towards Dark Souls? <sighs> it used to be that we had games like Devil May Cry and God of War and Ninja Gaiden, for example. Yeah. Um, you don't see those so much anymore. Ninja Gaiden, kind of. 
petered out after a while. The uh, the stylish action genre of games. Yeah. Yep. Uh, I feel like that's because they are a single player experience, and now no one wants to make expensive games that are just a single player experience. They need monetization. They need other people. They want you to play it for years. Um, that's not being cynical. That's just the truth of the matter. Games are expensive, and they need a way to keep bringing money in. So, with the case of Dark Souls, for example, um, multiplayer is oh yeah, kind just, of like the the thing that keeps people coming back. It's just baked into the entire game. And actually, I'm gonna just play this real quick because I need to get a com this. Is, I need a constant combo, and you just do this by uh, when you're not attacking, you're firing a gun, so you can keep that combo going. That's what the gun is good for. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, like, ideally, you want to be uh, always combo ABC, always be comboing. <laughs> Combos are for closers. I think I did it. Did I do it? Oh, I did it. Okay. Good job. Thanks. That should heal me too. Um, I'm pretty sure. Very nice, Bob. <laughs> Watch. See, they show me with a full heart meter, but I bet you that it will reduce my life back to where it was when I leave. I think that happened before. It's just like, you're not going to get away that easily, kid. Little photo up for everybody. Seven Pains was mentioning that he's amazed how many comments and RPG suggestions last Friday's favorite RPG article got. Oh, yeah, I need to actually check back with those, uh... Did, did our one go up today yet? The uh, one that we wrote for today? Not sure. It's favorite RPG character. Can you talk about who you chose? Yeah. Is it a secret? No, it's not a secret. I picked Chie. Okay, that's a good choice. Um, it, it was a toss-up between Lenneth Valkyrie and Chie because... Um, but I ended up going with Chie because I talked about Valkyrie profile in the last article. Um, and I like Chie because I personally identify with her as a, uh, a tomboyish nerd who, eat with an, who <laughs> maybe not, steak. maybe not eat steak, but with an appetite for life, I guess. Mm. Um, and I... Uh, silver, not bad. Very nice. So you didn't get too screwed, Bob. No. Very <laughs> I was I was slightly embarrassed by how poorly I did against those hammer the hammer bros. I uh, I chose Mog from Final Fantasy VI as mine. Mog. Yeah. Why Mog? Because I was obsessed with Mog when that game came out for some reason. Mm -hmm. I would like just draw him on everything because he was a really easy character to draw. And then also secretly he is a he's like a subversive um, uh, mascot character in that he's cute and cuddly but he also kicks ass and. His story is really dark because, spoilers, uh, his entire race dies off. What? Throughout the course of that. Like, by the time the, the game changes to the world of Ruin, um, he is the only one left of the Moogles. He is the last of the Moogles. So, he secretly has the darkest story in Final Fantasy VI, I'm pretty sure. I'm gonna skip past this, we don't need to see this. Jeez, Bob, violating this, the spirit of long plays here. I don't think anyone cares about watching the same cutscene that plays every time you pick up a new weapon. Fair enough. So, uh, sorry, I didn't mean to sound so catty. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna buy a few thingies here. Um, I'm gonna rely on, on items just because I don't want to have to repeat stuff that people are watching. I think you can respect that. I think you can. Yeah, I can respect that. And we're just going to see what we have here. These, I believe, are just new outfits. Um, I was seeing somebody was commenting on Twitter that we. They want us to wear the Nintendo outfits. The Nintendo outfits? Oh, I have to unlock those, actually. I would like to. I, I personally usually use the Star Fox outfit. Oh. Sexy Star Fox. Sexy Star Fox. So what do we unlock here? Um, I'm trying to... Okay. To be honest, I don't use a lot of the, the special moves. Um, I'll buy a few just for the sake of having them, but... um. This one is really just made to launch you across the screen. You, you launch yourself forward and then you fire a gun into the enemy. A lot of these are really helpful for combos and I really need to get into like high level combo play if you want to call it that. Um, I might as well try it. Oh, geez, I'm sorry, I might as well buy it. The heel slide is the same thing but with the kick, so. It's nice that they let you try it before you buy it. Yeah, yeah. I. 
I think this, the first game is the same way. Yeah, it is. It plays into what we were talking about in the first part, where it's really cool that it lets you just practice different combos and everything while you're waiting for the game to load. Yeah. It lets you do something with your hands and... Yeah, instead of just staring at, like, tool text or whatever, uh, or lore, you're actually... You can just, you know, screw around, even if you're not doing anything productive. So I think we're done. I can't buy any cool costumes yet. Oh, maybe I can. Nope. See, this is a Super Mario costume, I think. They're pretty expensive, actually. Oh, yeah. Super Mario 64. Yeah. I believe one of them is Peach and the other one is Daisy. So now I'm going to head on over to chapter three. We're heading up into heaven now. The gates of paradise. Yeah. It's kind of like the opposite of Doom. Uh, cause... Because in Doom, like, you start out on Mars and then you steadily descend down into hell. Yeah. In this one, you're starting on Earth, and you're steadily ascending upward into heaven. I like that better. Literally, I think there is literally a stairway to heaven in this game. It might even be in this level, actually. I compared this to Darksiders earlier, and that's because, in part, no matter what the game, it seems like... The concepts of heaven and hell are really codified in games. Yeah. Like, heaven enemies always kind of look the same. They're always super heavily armored, kind of golden armor. I think they are really drawing from, uh, I could say this as a liter literature major, they're really drawing from like Milton and uh, Dante and things like that. Like the obvious, the obvious sources for, you know, cool ideas about heaven and hell that were made by people who were probably drinking wine laced with opium. Um, yep, writers were getting drunk and high from uh, pretty much ever. Speaking of action games, did you ever play Dante's Inferno? Oh, hell no. <laughs> God, that game was so bad. Uh, visceral games. Are they still around? Is Visceral, visceral still around? Was I thought it was Visceral, visceral yeah. Oh, Visceral's still around. Okay, what do They're they do? They're making Battlefield Hardline right now. Ah, I see, so... Um, yeah. They were doing no Dead comment. Space for a while. All right. Yeah. But yeah, uh, I wasn't like, you can't do that to Dante's Inferno. It's just like, no, everyone rips off Dante's Inferno. That's fine. I just didn't really care for how, like, edgy they were making it, if you catch my drift. Like, there are boobs in this game, and blood, and severed heads. Look out, everybody. It also has the most hilariously tacky PR campaign I've ever seen. Oh, uh, like that, that really, that takes some work. What was it? Oh, my gosh. They did stuff like they sent a check to journalists let me pause this this level is just like a level in ninja turtles 3 the manhattan project but oh my gosh it <laughs> totally is like the second level right yeah. when they surf all the way back to manhattan yeah i love how this level looks but please go on ken sorry they sent money to game journalists and said oh. if you cash this check you are like guilty of the sin of greed greed i would have cashed um, it on a burrito <laughs> That sounds like collusion, Bob. Yeah. You're taking money hats. I know, money burritos. <laughs> I wonder how much money they were uh, sending out, like what, the, how much the checks were for. They also did the the fake Catholic pro uh, protest. Oh, that's right, yeah. Outside of E3. Mm-hmm. Man, has, uh, has marketing gotten less crass? Or do marketing people just have less money now? I think they just don't care about us as much. That's true. They care about YouTubers. Ooh, I was not expecting that. So this is kind of a reused boss, but they do it in a new place, which I like. Um, man, I'm getting my butt kicked With by the speed boats. I forget how you're supposed to. I think you just have to catch up to him. Oops. Yeah, sorry, this takes a bit of concentration. I believe in you, Bob. <laughs> I will be your cheerleader. Oh man, you're ah. you're, you're supposed to dodge and then attack from there. Oh, neat. It's 
So that's how you do it. You really feel the impact of these just massive hits. So now, now I'm gonna. Ooh, it's darker. I love how this level looks. It's so great. Oh yeah, it is really great, isn't it? Oh, the lightning uh, cyclone. Like, like I said, like in any other game, this would be the final stage. But now this is like stage. Or the three. run up to the final stage. Yeah, it's just like you're gonna fight the final boss. Here's the coolest set piece we could think of. It's like, and Platinum's like, no, we have like 30 set pieces, and they all look this good. Um, I love Platinum games. There we go. Finally did it. Yeah, see, some levels are just like a boss fight. I love that. They really know how to mix things up. Um, actually, some of the hardest bosses in the game are not huge. They're like the size of Bayonetta. Including one that you cannot use Witch Time against. Really? Yeah. Um, Is it your friend? Spoiler no, alert. No, it's not. Oh, thought I could dodge that. Man. Do we have anything coming in on chat? Um. Somebody was wondering why they saw an ad in Spanish. Uh, I would consult your internet provider. <laughs> <laughs> on Twitch? I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I get I get ads in Spanish on YouTube. I think it's just because I live in California. Oh, there you go. Now you're in. Now you're in the sky. Yep. So why did you go through a water tunnel to heaven? Uh, I. I don't remember. <laughs> and Video Red Stripe um, brought it back to our comments about Zelda clones. Okay, cool. He asked if we had ever played Crusader of Senti or Solo. Oh, for sure, yeah. Um, actually, I want to actually I want to go back and finish that game. It, it it's a pretty competent looking Zelda clone at least. Can you explain it? It's essentially a Link to the Past for Genesis. It is a shameless a Link to the Past clone. Like, absolutely shameless. Was it good? Um, the little bit I played of it, I liked it. But like, like I said, I gotta play more of it before I can uh, weigh in on a 25-year-old game. I had never heard of it until now. Oh. Yeah, I'm not even a big Genesis guy, but um, I know it just because it is a Link to the Past clone, and it's like, I really want to try that. I also have never played Beyond Oasis or its sequels, or sequel. Legend of Oasis or something. Did you own a Genesis back in the day? Uh, never. I was a Nintendo boy. You can probably tell from my bias coverage. They, they, they bought my childhood, so now, now my adulthood is uh, is theirs. A soldier sold to Nintendo early. Yeah, I was Took eight. them while they're young. Yeah, I had no say in the matter. I was only offered propaganda at every, at every stage of my life. I like how Jeremy calls Nintendo Power, or he, he used to call Nintendo Power, Nintendo Pravda. Just like communist propaganda. <laughs> like a communist newspaper. Uh, I do not like to wish to speak ill of the dead, but... Oh no, I mean I mean what Nintendo Power was when we were growing up. It became a much different thing. Oh, it yeah. had to evolve. It couldn't have just been a Nintendo pamphlet forever. Well, eventually Nintendo got tired of it and sold it off to Future. Yeah, it's like we don't need a magazine anymore. It's sad, I wish it could still exist, but uh, I just feel like, in terms of tradition, that's a tradition I like, but... So this is just a huge boss. I love it. Somebody's, uh, Jabal is commenting on how crazy this game looks. It is the best. Have you seen a crazier game than this in your life? I'm sure I have. Maybe like Katamari. It's Katamari like was pretty crazy. This is a different kind of crazy, though. I'm getting back to Diop Dante's Inferno, which might be the last time this game ever gets mentioned in popular but, media. Oh, um, well, I'm sure somebody has to have liked it, right? Uh, got like B's. Yeah. Solid eights. I imagine it wasn't. It wasn't terrible. It was competent. Yeah, I mean. But that's the thing is that. Okay, you're going down into heaven, right? Or you're going into hell, right? So I take it you played this game. I watched Matt Leon play it. Okay. You go. To, you're going in. You're de you're going down into hell. This is if if you don't want to just be the same as everybody else, you really need to have really distinct imagery, right? Yeah. Well, 
I mean, it looks like a kind of a God of War ripoff. Oh, for sure. I mean, I think that's, I mean, that's kind of what they were going for, right? Uh, yes. Oh, you know what? I not not to change the subject, but I think Lords of Shadow was was the last time there was like a Devil May Cry God of War style game, right? That's I mean, Bayonetta. That was almost more Metroidvania, wasn't mm -hmm. it? I don't know. I mean, the combat was like God of War with a whip. It felt yeah, like. yeah, that's true. But you're doing more exploration, I guess. But yeah, I could I could kind of see that. Konami saw it as a kind of a triple-A franchise. They were delighted because they finally had their triple-A action game. Yeah. And then I guess Castle Lords of Shadow 2 did terribly. Um, yeah, I, I didn't hear about it, but I don't know if there was really a market for that kind of game. Well, it got kind of poor reviews. Yeah. Yeah. It yeah. had like stealth sections where you played as a rat or something? Yeah, everybody hated the stealth section. That's what I remember the most. Um, it's like, why am I the world's most popular, powerful uh, vampire, but I have to do stealth missions as a, as a rat in my own castle? <laughs> because video games. Because video games. Yeah, this is a long boss fight. Really, there's not there's not a lot to this. You're just avoiding things coming in when you can. Mm. Uh, when he turns red, he's going to do a bunch of quick swipes. He's almost down, though. If you're, if you're watching at home, we're about to move on soon, so uh, he will fall. This is, he's down to his final life bar, so not a lot of tricks left. Oop, except for that one, I always fall for it. Let me know how loud my button clicking is. It's got to be. I'm trying to hold my my uh, my controller away from the from the from the mic. Yeah. Yeah. Especially when I got to do uh, like a ton of button mashing, which is most of the time. If you're watching this, um, which uh, eight of you are right now. Oh, hello. Hi, everybody. Um, Tell us what your favorite action game is. Is it yeah. Bayonetta 2? Or are you more of a Devil May Cry person? Or are you... Or did you... Are you do you love Dante's Inferno and you're secretly steaming after kind of crushing it? Maybe there were... Eight, or being derivative and boring. Maybe there were 80 people in the room before we started making fun of it. No. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go, everybody. Sweet so paid for. <laughs> Nice. There you go. <laughs> now that I'm now, now that I'm playing this for people, the crotch shots are more uh, apparent. It's like, oh. They say it's loud but not annoying. Okay. I will try my best to uh, to hide the controller. Stone. That is the worst score you can get. Ouch. It is literally possible to keep a combo going throughout every level. Like, you could keep a combo going while fighting that boss, too, if, if you want. Oh, really? Yeah. I just uh, only have so much stamina. <laughs> I don't recall asking for your permission. Oh, and I was wrong about our final destination. Going down. So Bayonetta will be moving on soon. Um, you, haven't, you haven't died yet. Nope. Did I, I, die I feel like I'm jinxing it by saying that. Uh, did I die in the, in the first uh, live long play or whatever? Did I, did I die there yet? And I mean, did I die back then? In the first part? Yeah. No, you didn't. Okay. Uh, you kind of came close at one point. But otherwise you've been, you've been good. Hooray! Oh, and Video Red Stripe says that your button mashing is loud but not annoying. Okay. <laughs> I will try to keep it under control. Look at it this way. Could have been worse. It's wow, hard. We're I, like cruising right along here. Yeah, I think I might do uh, like what time do we have? We got 3.45. Um, okay. Do you want to do one more stage? Yeah, let's keep going. Okay. Um. 
Uh, Jabalad says, I haven't played too many of these types of games. The only one I got into was the original God of War. Mm. Which, I uh, it was a good game. I'm sure that is the one that holds up the best, from what I've heard. I, I, didn't, I, I don't really like its aesthetic that much. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's the David Jaffe thing. That is, I'm not I'm kind of a fan of his games that much. But, I mean, not everything is for everybody, so it's okay. I thought the God of War, original God of War aesthetic was fine. It's just, mm. it steadily, it went more and more overboard with the, is, uh, the violence. Yeah, it's like I could see it being a little more justified. It used earlier. to be that the action was hilarious in the first, or the violence was actually pretty funny in the first game. Yeah. There's... There's a guy at the very beginning that is like hanging off the edge of a cliff or something, and Ari or the God of War Kratos walks up and it's like, "I'm just here to get like this one thing from you," and then uh. he just lets him off the fall off the cliff, and then that guy comes back in in hell in Hades, and the poor guy is there again, and Kratos makes him fall again. Uh. I'm like, geez, Kratos, you're such a jerk. He needs to uh, control his rage a bit, I think. I've always said the first God of War ended... Like, it should have just ended there because it had the best ending. He becomes a new God of War. Video games can never just end. <laughs> it had a great ending. There has to be several thousand more until people get tired of them. And then... And then... Kratos just kind of becomes a jerk. Yeah. Oh, it's like even more of a jerk. He's like, I'm going to rampage around and I'm making this statue kill everybody. And then the gods got so pissed off that they took away his powers. And you're like, you know, kind of justified in why they took away your powers, Kratos. You were being kind of a dick. There are so many sequels, prequels, midquels. I have no idea what's happening with that uh, series outside the first game. Mm hmm. Like, there's two PSP games, um, three PS1, two games, two mm -hmm. PS3 games. There's a lot of God of War. Video Red Strike says that he hated God of War demons and Dark Souls if they count. So I guess he's saying that he likes those. Oh, wait, wait. He, he, uh, say that again? He hated God of War. Yeah. I think he's saying that he likes Demon Souls and Dark Souls, okay. if they count, which they do. Yeah, sure. Count, count in terms of an action game, or... Uh, in terms of an action game. Yeah, yeah. sure. I mean, it's, it's a different kind of action, but... Uh, and the story of Thor on Genesis, otherwise old as it is. Oh, uh, yeah. I think that's called... I think that is Beyond Oasis. That, that's what it was called here. I think it's the story of Thor in um, Japan, maybe Europe. Hmm. I think Bayonetta works because everything about her is r really wry. Yeah. Like, this game it constantly has a, a twinkle in its eye, <laughs> you could say, right? She never breaks her, her uh, like, her attitude never slips. Like, she always is very in control of the situation, even if it doesn't look like she is. Yeah, exactly. That's what I like about her. So, are we in Venice? We're somewhere. This looks like Venice to me. I'm sure, yeah, I think it's very Venice inspired. Having been to Venice and all- Oh, I'm sorry. I'm not allowed to leave the, the country. <laughs> because you don't have a passport. Yeah, they really want you to have one of those. Shocking, I know. Let me see where I'm going here. Yeah, very pretty. So after the big boss battle last time, now you're just kind of being left to explore a little more. Yeah, a little bit. Uh, there's This is the only hidden thing over here. It'll, it never hurts to check out the periphery. I got a broken witch heart, which is actually a very, a very um, valuable item. So it's sort of like a heart container in Zelda. Mm. Yeah, I, I, uh, I'm drawing a blank on what happens next, but um, it's not just going to be one big boss fight like we did before. Which was a really cool boss fight. It was a cool boss fight. I enjoyed it. Oh great, this guy. Good old Fidelity. <laughs> Man, Fidelity, I hate those. I hate Fidelity. <laughs> See, if Kami was directing this game, he would let that thing hurt you right out of the cutscene. 
Just to be a jerk? Yeah. Just be like, you weren't paying attention. Ah, uh, I'm Kamiya. <laughs> I will block you. Kamiya, the ultimate troll. Yeah. He'll block you. Watch out. He'll block you for arbitrary uh, reasons. Sometimes. Like how he blocked you. Yeah. Well, I, I was I was joking, and he wasn't in the mood for jokers. But some people... If, if people ask him questions about Bayonetta 2, he blocks them because he's like, Get it through your heads, I did not direct this game. <laughs> it's like, well, you you were there. You did exist <laughs> Don't be so at pedantic. the time. Yeah. I'm calling you out, Kamiya. You'll never hear this. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he could kick my ass. Like, he looks like... If any game developer is just going to, like, punch you and, like, throw you through a window, it would be him. I've seen him in person. Do you think that's true? Probably. I mean, I've seen the pictures of him when he was a biker. Uh, they're great. In fact, there's a story where he got into a really bad motorcycle accident during, um, the development of Devil May Cry. Mm -hmm. He was, like, in a coma or something. Jeez, that's terrifying. And, um, I'm pretty sure that's all online. There was an interview with him where he talked about that. I don't think he rides anymore. Understandably. Yeah. Motorcycles are just organ donors in the end. Oh. Sorry, motorcycle riders. That's because people in cars are jerks. True. Speaking of someone who's almost been hit by a car several times. True. Take that, car havers. Whoa, what is... Oh, hello. Yep. So is this one of those games where hell invades heaven because... I'm pretty sure in Bayonetta, heaven and hell, they're equally jerks. As usual. Yeah. It's like they're very much the aristocracy that's keeping everyone down. That's usually how it goes. Yeah. That's how it is in uh, Diablo 3, which also looks a lot like this game. Oh, Diablo Aesthetically. Yeah. Or at least its version of heaven does. I like all the feathers floating around in the air, though. Yep, little particles are the future of games. <laughs> Crap floating in the air is the future of games. Think of all the old games you played that couldn't have crap floating through the air. I want, yeah, I, I want to see a Mario game with like, like dust motes like flat, like floating in front of him, or something. That would be weird. Mm. That'd be strange. Here we go. This one's a little trickier. What to do? Come on, check. <laughs> so why do you like to go with the the twin saber kind of look? Uh, I like it. I mean, I, it, I don't have my weapons unlocked that I, I usually use in this version of the game mm -hmm. that we're playing. It's not my save. Uh, well, it's not my, you know what I mean. I totally forgot where the rest of these things are. They're on the side of the building. Yeah, but I, I think I went down the wrong side. Whoops. It's okay. Uh, I usually like to have chainsaw arms and whip feet, but uh, I don't have those unlocked yet. These games really F with your sense of direction. They certainly do. That's cool. I like it when a game disorients you. Yeah, I don't see... I mean, like, I, I wish more games did that, did the Mario Galaxy thing, but, um... Yeah. Not a lot of games do that, understandably. Because it's hard? It's hard to pull off, like, effectively without making people want to barf. <laughs> and also making them lo completely lose, like, any sense of direction. Yeah. Yeah. And from what I heard, Mario Galaxy wasn't popular, so maybe people don't like it. People are wrong. I feel like Nintendo is kind of hinting that Mario Galaxy is going to come back, though. Just the fact that Rosalina is so prominent all of a sudden. Yeah, yeah. And she came back for Mario Galax Mario Kart and Smash Brothers. Rosalina is Peach for the 90s. I like Rosalina. I know, but she feels like edgier Peach. She's cuter. Uh, uh, yes. She's cuter. <laughs> Like, I want a bad girl. She's not a bad girl. Know, she has I a know. cute little star and she reads bedtime There's stories. There's no, like, Walu like, female Waluigi yet. Oh, that would be cool. Yeah, I want, like, a dark, evil female character. Like, so what would it be, like, Wapich? I, th I think our, uh, God, whatever pun they want to do. Because Rot Waluigi peach. is a Japanese pun, Moldy essentially. Moldy Peach. Moldy peach. Yeah. <laughs> Ew. Yeah. That's gross, actually. I was thinking of the moldy peaches. Um, I don't know, but uh, it's weird that there are the evil variants of male characters, but there's no evil peach yet. 
I mean, we have Wendy Okupa, maybe. She's our one evil female Nintendo character. Oh, true, right? But she's kind of... I don't know, I don't like her. I never like Wendy O. Here we go. I went to school with girls who look like Wendy Koopa. <laughs> so they had just giant inner tube lips and, ho and hoop earrings and no yeah. hair. <laughs> yeah. Wow, where'd you go to school, Chernobyl? <laughs> no, Minnesota. Okay. Sorry, I couldn't resist. Okay. That's uh, fine. Whoa, that was good. Pure platinum. Yeah. Um, Shibala wants to know what I thought of Majora's Mask 3D. Cat has controversial opinions, as we all do. You seem what? to be uh, you seem to be skeptical about Majora's Mask, Cat. I'm not trying to call you out. I, I um, feel like you're skeptical about it. It's I okay. I don't want to say too much about it because I haven't played it. There you go. So I will say that based on what I know of it and what I have seen of it, um, my girlfriend beat it all in college. Mm -hmm. Which, she's more hardcore than I am, because she beat Majora's Mask, and I have not. Um, it was interesting, but it seemed like um, a one-off experiment. Um, and maybe something... too much built around a gimmick. Mm. But, like I said, I haven't played it. So. I think you should. You will definitely change your mind. So I am going to play it. Okay. And and I'm definitely gonna give it a fair shake. It's just that to this point, like it's it's been so weird and so like offbeat and it's, like it's, sitting in the long shadow, say Ocarina of Time and yeah. all that. And I think that probably as a game, I'm gonna go on a limb and say that it's probably better than Wind Waker. Uh, yeah. I mean, I would I would go that far. I wish it looked like Wind Waker. Yeah. But, yeah. But uh, it, it it never will. I, I think even I think now people will like it more than before, not just because. Oh my god, that guy's in Guilty Gear. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think people more people will like Majora's Mask more now, not because of all the the fame and like adulation it's gotten over the past fifteen years, but just because the last since Majora's Mask, Zelda has kind of had the, the same form mm -hmm. on consoles, and I think people are um, are really ready for something new, as uh, Link Between Worlds showed us. So. I think they will appreciate Majora's Mask more for it, for it not being like, oh, collect the three things. Oh, look, something happened. Now collect the five things. Oh, now there's Ganon in the end. Like, that's sort of the, the Legend of Zelda formula that's been going on, and uh, I'm ready for it to uh, change. Hopefully, it did, with Link to the pa uh, Link uh, yeah, to yeah, Worlds, yeah, I think for the that most part. That showed people, like, um, we can do something different. I have a lot of hope for the Wii U uh, yeah. Zelda. It looks gorgeous. It needs to be... I, I like. I already like the art better than Skyward Sword. Yeah, Skyward Sword felt like a just like. I compromise. never. I never liked the art very much in Skyward Sword. Uh, um, yeah. So, it's gorgeous for one, and the way that they're talking about the world and how big it is, and how it, it seems like they've taken the concepts from Link Between Worlds and they're just running with it, right? Yeah, for sure. Um, like just freedom, which is great. Exactly. And, yeah, I mean, uh, I, I really want it to be good, and I think for Nintendo it needs to be good. It needs to sell consoles. Nah. Eh. I think... They're not they're not giving us Zelda as, like, oh, you guys deserve it after all these years. They're giving it to us because it's like, we need to sell this hardware in some way. I don't know if that will ever work. I don't well, know. Well, people expect Zelda. Yeah. I don't know if Zelda is as relevant as it used to be. I disagree. I, I really don't know. I think Zelda's Nintendo's um, outside of Pokemon for which Nintendo, is, yes, but for everyone else, it goes else. Pokemon One, Zelda Two. Yeah, uh, like Zelda has the most quote legit gamer cred, I yeah, guess you could say, true. in that certain competing sites that only cover AAA and seem to have a real disdain for Nintendo. Yeah, um, <laughs> we won't they name will pay attention to Zelda yeah. in a way that they wouldn't even pay attention to say Mario. Yeah, I could see that. Yes. I'm just wondering from a... It, it'll, it'll have been probably five years since Skyward Sword. I wonder if the audience will have dried up or... No, if, no. Uh, I mean, just look around the internet, for God's sake. <laughs> look at how much uh, oh, yeah, Zelda, Zelda cosplay there still is. True. How much it gets discussed. When Hyrule Historia came out a couple years ago, and that thing sold like hotcakes. True. 
Uh, and of course, Link Between Worlds. You know, everybody right. loves that one. The new phrase is sold like cronuts. By the way, <laughs> oh, cakes that... are no longer a new invention. So now we just feel like it's, it's sold like a cronut. What is a cronut? It is an overpriced breakfast treat that you have to stand in line for 20 minutes to eat in the city, and it's all, and it's. So what you're saying it. is that it's a San Francisco thing. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. You you do this before getting on your tech bus and going to Twitter and making too much money. That's right. Come on, Twitter. Bring it, Twitter. Shots fired. And Twitch. Oh yeah, Twitch. So they're oh, in the no. city. They're in the city. <laughs> oh, here's a cute little like uh, Easter egg. Like this couple's in love, and they can't see Bayonetta, but I'm gonna end their fun. <laughs> Why are they shadows? Uh, Bayonetta and everything that's happening is happening on like a different plane of reality. So uh, they can't necessarily see you or what you're doing. But you can affect things in their plane. I believe in Bayonetta 1 there were enemies that you had to like pull them into this plane of reality to hurt them. Mm -hmm. They don't do that in this game, from what I remember. Jabalad says, I always hated the kid parts of Ocarina, so I was really wary of Majora's Mask and never played it back in the day. Weird. I wonder why. I wonder but, what was it about uh, being a kid that turned you off? But I played through it on the Wii, and it's a different but very solid game. Hmm. Well, I can actually agree with that. I hated being a kid in Ocarina. It's weird. Whenever I play through Ocarina, I play all the child dungeons, and then I'm done. Like, what? I've only played through the adult part of Ocarina, like, twice, maybe. It doesn't... It doesn't pick up till the adult part. It feels like the a kid part is so boring. It feels like a complete. I like the dungeons. I don't. I hate the Deku tree and the volcano Whoa. and the water. Or and the, the water temple is the best temple in that game, and that's the adult part. Ooh, that controversial opinion. No, it's not. Everyone it hates the, the water temple. Everyone. I don't hate it. It's I've the never most understood. ambitious and complex uh, dungeon in any Zelda game. You've never heard all the whining people do about that thing to the point where they had to change oh, it? Oh, it's too hard! Yeah. No, I like it. Actually, I'm not trying to say, like, I, I'm smarter than you, but I didn't get stuck in it when I when I played it originally. Um, when you're adult Link, your combat options open up a lot. The Link himself looks better. Uh, the world that's been corrupted by Ganon is more interesting to explore. Um, you get to ride around in a Pona, whereas you can't do that as a kid. Oh, that's right. I mean, just the list goes on, basically. And Link's voice changes. Instead of going, ha, he, yeah, he goes, ha, yeah. he, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Now it just sounds like a parrot. <laughs> <laughs> so here's some new weapons I can put on. Undine? They're in Star Trek Voyager. <laughs> um, really? Yes, sorry, nerdy how does, how does, reference. How does that work? Their species 8472, the mortal enemy of the board. They oh, live in fluidic space. Of course they do. <laughs> they can shapeshift. So uh, Star Trek is not above co-opting other mythologies then too, right? I don't know. Is Undine a thing Undini from... Undini is like a... I, God help me. It's, it's, it's a god or something from something. I don't know. I mean, it's Star Trek. I gotta get off my high I horse. mean, who are the Romulans? They're from the planets Romulus and Remus, for God's sake. And guess what? The Kardashians are not aliens, they're actually, um... Re no, it's not Kardashian. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. Bob! <laughs> what are the, what are the, uh, are they Armenian or something? What? The Kardashians? Yeah. No, they're just supposed to be totalitarian. Oh, I'm talking about the Kardashians. <laughs> oh, the Kardashians. <laughs> yeah. Well, see, um, like, why doesn't Star Trek have a series called Keeping Up with the Kardashians? <laughs> it would just fool people and then Star Trek could be on TV again. I'd watch that. Yeah. The Star Trek reality TV show, Keeping Up with the Kardashians. I feel like we have a real pitch here. Yeah. I'm sure that if, if Mad TV was still on, they would do a sketch about that and it would be terrible. Oh my god, that was a thing for a while. That was a thing for about 15 years. <laughs> it was so bad. It was bad. I don't know if it was worse or better than all that, but... All that was better. Uh, I didn't watch it. On the other hand, I was a 10-year-old. I was 10 and I had graduated to SNL. So I was like, why do I want to watch a, a sketch show for children when I can watch penis jokes and Which is funny jokes? because at least one of them made it on to Keenan. Yeah, Keenan. Was it Keenan? Yeah, Kel died in Vietnam. <laughs> what? No, he didn't. Yeah. He went back in time. <laughs> I don't know what happened to Kel. Maybe Kel's out there watching our pain at a live stream. <laughs> Just listening to us talk about Zelda. Yeah. And all that. Yeah. But by the way, if you're like watching this with us still, yeah. this is pretty much what you signed up for. Yeah. Birds and SNL and, and Zelda. Uh, pretty much anything but Bayonetta. Yeah. But we're also playing Bayonetta. I refuse to talk about Bayonetta. 
Here's one of the trickier bosses. I forget what the gimmick is here, but um, it's way cool. He's a cool design, mm -hmm. even though he's also in Guilty Gear. I feel like that that uh, it's not going to give him a lot of... I don't know, I feel like that mask is limiting. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. It's Neo. Pretty much. Except he doesn't have to bend backwards to um, dodge the bullets. Yeah, this is the first boss fight that kind of... Um, changes the rules a bit. There, I believe there's no witch time in this boss fight. Yep. Oh, no, there is. Maybe that's in a later one. But, uh, smaller enemies are harder to fight. They're just harder to hit, especially when they're bosses. They're faster. Usually when you're fighting a smaller enemy, it's more of a test of pure skill. Yeah. As opposed to, um, kind of being more gimmicky. Yeah. And also the smaller enemies are usually faster. That was also true in Devil May Cry, like, when you fought uh, Virgil or whatever in Devil May Cry 3, which is an awesome game, um, I, uh... Which one did you prefer? I like 3 the best. I mean, when you say 3, and there are, like, multiple releases of 3. Oh, uh, whatever the newest one is, the one that's not mean. My friend beat that game on the highest difficulty level. That is pretty dedicated. That game is not forgiving in ways that even Bayonetta 1 is. Okay, wow, I love how this looks. So while you're fighting this character, in the background, your two, like, familiars are fighting. It's so great. That is really great. They just constantly think of new ways to make these, these battles interesting. I feel like we've kind of hit this point into the ground. But this is just one more example where Bayonetta is a really visually interesting game without being, like, the most the absolute most technically accomplished game. Yeah, and it's it's still easy to follow the action even with everything going on, on the screen. As you, as you see, I'm doing pretty good, even though there's like a lot of distractions here. How am I playing? Dial 1800, um, US Gamer. <laughs> By the way, that that number does not exist. I would try it. It's, you're probably gonna get a uh, phone sex line. Do those still exist? Are, are we sure about that? I'd like to know if phone sex still exists. That seems very antiquated right now. And All I know is that Roger Rabbit, or like the the game Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Yeah. The number that you're supposed to dial in that game goes to a phone sex line now. Nice. A phone sex company bought up all of the numbers. Uh, like, okay. that's what they were doing for a while. They were spying up all these disused 1-800 numbers. So now basically Rock'em Sock'em Robots is happening in the, in the background while you're fighting. Again, like, the boss fights, they change so much. They're so cool. Um, I will be repeating that a lot throughout this, but uh, it's a great game. Well, we wouldn't be playing it if it weren't a great game. Yeah. No point. Why did you decide on Bayonetta 2, by the way, Kat? I think this was your idea. Because a lot of people were talking about the fact that... Well, we were originally going to stream Resident Evil HD Remaster. Oh, yeah, but Jeff Jeff Green stole our fire. Like, it, you, like the Black Dragon does. How dare you, Jeff? Um, and so I was like, I need an alternative stat. And as it happened, I went to... I was at our local game stop in December, because that's what I do. I need to buy a new Vita. Huh. A and new Vita? What, oh, your old Vita broke or something, right? Yeah, the um, the the D-pad like, stopped working properly. Whoa, that's... And just, I just started walking to the left all the time. That, that's strange. I mean, um, I know everything can fail, but the Vita just felt so solid. Yep, D-pad died on me. So I went out to buy a used Vita. <laughs> I actually got the 3D one. Whoa. Yep. <laughs> But, anyway, I happened to see Bayonetta 2 on the shelf, along with a Wii uh, Classic Controller. A Wii U Classic Controller, which is actually a pretty good controller. And I was like, oh, well, Bob keeps telling me how great this game is. I guess this will shut him up. And I, li <laughs> and I liked the original Bayonetta, so I bought it. And, um, and it, I just happened to have it, and then we needed something else to stream. And I was like, well, Bayonetta 2 kind of fits the bill. Yeah. 
it's seen as kind of an underappreciated game among hardcore fans. Any Wii U game is underappreciated. <laughs> but maybe especially Bayonetta 2. Yeah. Yeah, maybe because like it doesn't have that Nintendo pedigree. And it's not a known quantity among mainstream people. It would be I guess. so awesome if Platinum just became like a Nintendo second party. That'd be, that'd be the best. Kind of the new Rare? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I hope they'd be better than that. Oh, I'm sorry. Did you see the article a while ago that Nintendo was looking into making Harry Potter games? Really? It would have been a lot better than whatever EA came up with. I see. Well, so this I guess this was probably concurrent with the movie's popularity, right? Yeah. Like Nintendo EAD, like Japan Nintendo, wanted to make Harry Potter games? Unclear. Okay. Because, I mean, uh, now now some um, some Japanese RPGs were bought Harry Potter because it's pretty popular over there, too. Very popular. And this boss is not forgiving. Nope. We're on to the last phase, though. Of course. <laughs> and now we play Rock'em Sock'em Robots, guys. Seven Pain says, just how far of the game are we in? Because how can they top this? Yeah. We're about halfway through, I think. Yeah, I, I love Rock'em Sock'em Robots. <laughs> this does look like a final boss fight, doesn't it? Yes. If this could have been the final level of a game. Yeah. Every level of Bayonetta is the final level of someone else's game. Bayonetta 2. But this all just goes back to Dragon Ball Z. Yeah. It's like an entire generation of... Um, kids of raised, Japanese uh, yeah. Japanese uh, action developers raised on Dragon Ball Z and, and the like. Yeah. And shonen anime in general. Cool. Yeah, it definitely comes from that, that same place. Oh, well, we just finished chapter two and you got a silver award. That was chapter four. Or chapter four, sorry. Yeah, I okay. saw the two meet. Oh, uh, yeah. The four meet. Uh, yeah, and I mean, we're only chapter four. I think there's like eight or ten, maybe. But uh, we will be back in a week or so, right? Yeah. Will we announce when we're coming back? Uh, well, we'll be back next week. Yeah, please look at US Gamer's uh, front page. Yeah. And it'll tell Keep you. Keep an eye on it. Oh. And you know, you should subscribe to our uh, our Twitch channel. I agree. Because we don't just stream our long plays, we also stream other games. Today, I, uh, the, earlier this week, I streamed Evolve. If you're watching Bob this. Bob streamed. Um, Majora's Mask, like to piggyback on all of the Majora's Mask talk. Yeah, that's on our YouTube channel now. But uh, if you're watching this on Twitch, just hit the follow, subscribe button, whatever it is. I forget what it's called. What is it on, on Twitch? I mean, it's a little heart button. That, it's a little heart button. Yeah, that you, you see next to the views button or whatever. So yeah, like totally click on that and we'll love you forever. Yeah. Um, Not a guarantee. <laughs> <laughs> Not guaranteed to love you forever. Yeah. So we've just finished chapter four. We're heading into chapter five next yep. time we play. Um, and, uh, in the meantime, keep an eye on US Gamer for all of our wonderful coverage. When we finish this up, Bob and I are going to do a, uh, we're gonna post all of the parts of the series on um, our front page. Yeah, it'll be like a play, like a YouTube playlist probably. Yeah, we're gonna make a to YouTube guess. playlist now that there are actual two parts. Yeah. <laughs> and I guess it's going to go like four parts, probably. Probably, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, we're going. so uh, thanks for joining us. Yeah, I had a lot of fun, and we'll see you guys next week. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Bob, where can, they, where can they find you? Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm at Bob Servo on Twitter, and I'm on US Gamer. I read all of our stuff, and I do stuff for something awful as well. So, uh, yeah, be sure to look me up and say hi, and let me know if you like Bayonetta 2, because I love it.